there and welcome to the little apartment on the prairie. I wanted to show you what I'm going to do with the red clover and the plantain that I foraged for yesterday. And if you didn't see that video, I'll put a link to it down in the description. Um, I've got my red clover in this plastic bag. You've probably seen red clover growing in your yard. Looks like this. Um, it looks more purple than red, but they call it red clover. So I'm just going to dump it here into a colander. Um, this paper bag I can use the next time I go foraging because it's not dirty or messed up or anything. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to spray off these clovers. When I'm going to let them drain, I'm going to pick off the green some, most of the green, so I just have the purple flowers, um, but I'm going to let them dry first to do that because it's easier when they're dry than when they're wet. And the green stuff I'll put in my compost bin. I'm going to dehydrate these, but I'm going to let them dry a little bit, um, just to dry. Well, I said I was going to let them dry before I picked out the green bits, but while I'm talking about it. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to put them on, my on a dehydrator tray and stick them in the dehydrator. And so I've got some carrots that I'm cooking on the stove um, for Isaac. And they're little baby carrots. They're all boiling nicely. And I've got some washed plantain. And I'm just going to chop it up with scissors, the stem and all, into little bits. These carrots are almost done cooking, so this will kind of wilt the plantain. It doesn't need to cook it a lot. Isaac will eat plantain in small amounts with other food. Um, if I mix it in his food, see if these carrots are soft enough yet. Yeah, they're getting soft. I'll turn off the heat and just let it sit a little bit. And then this will go with Isaac's meals, with a few of his meals. He eats vegetables along with his, he's on a raw diet. I think I've talked about that before. So the plantain, you know, it's just like leafy greens. It's a little bit wilted because wilted I picked it yesterday, but that's okay. Um, and you're going to clean that just like you would clean, you know, salad greens or whatever. I'm just going to dump it in a strainer. I'm going to save the bag. The bag's fine. And uh, kind of rinse off the leaves. Hi, Sassy. I don't think you like plantain, but it's hard to tell. Sassy ate a tomato yesterday. I mean, not a whole tomato, like a chunk of a tomato. She stole it out of my salad bowl and then she ate it. I didn't think she would, but she did. All right, so that's it. You let your cat sniff them or lick them or not. That's up to you. Silly girl. All right, so I'm just going to put these uh, clovers. I'm going to do the clovers first on my dehydrator tray. I've got the screen on here because they're not that big. I don't want them to fall through the little holes in the trays. Sasty was up here trying to steal the clovers and run off with them to play with them. I think some plantain can go on this same tray. Um, things that don't have like a strong scent or flavor, you can dehydrate at the same time. If I was dehydrating, say, something like onions and strawberries, I would not put them in the dehydrator at the same time. I don't just mean not on the same tray. I mean not in the, in the dehydrator at all at the same time because my strawberries would come out smelling and tasting of onion. So then I'm just gonna lay the plantain leaves on here and I'm gonna need another tray to do all the plantain, but some of them are a little bit like rolled, shriveled up because I picked them a day ago, but that's okay, it won't hurt them. I'm going to try and spread them out. It doesn't matter if they kind of touch each other a little bit, but I'll try and spread them out some. And then I'm going to dehydrate them. I'll tell you the thing about dehydrating is really everybody always wants to know, let's start another tray, um, how long it takes to dehydrate something. And I'm like, I don't know. It just, you dehydrate it till it's dry. I mean, really, it's, it's done when it's done. 
it doesn't matter how long it is. So usually with stuff like this, like it might be done in eight hours. Sometimes I leave it in for more like 12 hours just to make sure it's hard to over dry. It. It's not going to burn it if you leave it in a long time. But if you don't have it dry enough, then you're not going to get, um, it's not going to store for a long time. And I want this to store for a good long time. So I want to make sure it's really dry. So I'll probably leave it in for about 12 hours. Um, it is almost two o'clock in the afternoon. So I'll probably just put it in now. And sometime in the middle of the night when I wake up to go to the bathroom, because when you get older, you have to get up to pee all the time at night, unfortunately. I'll just get up and uh, shut off the dehydrator and let it cool down a little bit before I put it in a jar. You don't want to let it shut down too much. So Isaac tends to be an early riser. He gets up and needs to go out and wants to eat breakfast. So I'll probably turn off the dehydrator then. I just dropped a piece somewhere. I don't know where it went. I'll probably get up and turn off the dehydrator then. And uh, then after that, I'll let it cool down. And when I actually get out of bed for good in the morning, then I'll put them in a jar. And I'm going to have a little bit more. Let's see if I've got another dehydrator tray down here. I do, but I don't know if this one's clean. Yeah, this one's not clean. There's a reason it's been sitting down here waiting for me to wash it. All right, well, I'm going to go get another tray and put the rest of it on there, but this is, this is all I'm doing with it.